Hi, everyone. This is Rico Figliolini, host of Peace Corner's Life here in the city of Peace Corner's Gwinnett County. I have a couple of great guests with me today. They are student artists at the upcoming Wesleyan Artist Market. Uh, but before I introduce them quickly, let me just say thank you to EV Remodeling Inc., who is a sponsor of not only this podcast, but the publications that we do, including Peachtree Corners Magazine and Southwest Gwinnett Magazine. So I want to thank them for being a strong sponsor, a community member as well. And if you want to find out more about EV Remodeling Inc., just go to their website, which is easy, evremodelinginc.com. So thank you for that. Um, our guest today is on the left, depending on how you're viewing this, Esther Cooper from seventh grade. Say hi, Esther. Hi. And Bree Hill from 10th grade. Hey, Bree. Hey. Both from Wesleyan School. Um, and for one, uh, she's gonna be at the Wesleyan Artist Market the second time, I believe. And for another, this is her first time. So let's start with Esther Cooper, who's um, interested in culinary arts. Uh, so Esther, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, like he said, my name is Esther and I um, I really enjoy baking and I'm going to be selling probably mostly cake pops at the artist market. So I've been working on kind of perfecting that technique for a while. So I think they'll be pretty good. All right, cool. Uh, Bree, Bree Hill, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Bree Hill. I, this is my second year in the Wesleyan Artist Market. I experience, I have experience in different things with watercolor, acrylic paint, oil paint, and even mixed media and pottery. I've done animals in different subjects. Excellent. So last year, if I remember correctly from what I've read, you participated and submitted ceramic and clay sculptures last year. Yep. Cool. And this year you're going to do something a bit different, right? Using different medium. You want to tell us a little bit about why you chose that medium to introduce this year? So I did a little bit of acrylic paint last year. I was more focusing on ceramics because I did different animals like elephants and dogs, swans, that sort. But I have the most experience in acrylic paint and I wanted to expand the things that I did. Mm -hmm. Like I've done graphite self-portraits so far. I will use acrylic with like cars, flower bouquets. I wanted to show people something that I've been doing for a long time. Okay, cool. Um, artists can do whatever they please as long as it inspires, right? Um, Esther, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, the type of art themes that inspire you best. What inspires you? What do you look at when you're thinking of culinary arts and deciding what to, what to make or bake? Well, cool. uh, I would say that I, um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I actually do draw a little bit of inspiration from baking shows. That's okay. actually how I kind of got started with baking. Like I saw these baking shows and I was like, wait, this is so cool. So okay. I kind of picked up baking. Okay. So I get inspired by that. I get inspired by, you know, Pinterest and, you know. Okay. So you're on Pinterest also building a board of? Uh... Not really building a board. I just. Okay. Just I scrolling don't... through? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's that's fine. You find you have to discover your passion and your inspiration in, in a, a lot of different places, right? Um, when you're creating your, your treats, your sweets, is there a particular ingredient, favorite ingredient you have that you like using? Um, butter. <laughs> uh, I mean, can't go wrong with that. No, no can't go wrong there. Um, probably sugar too, I would imagine, but yeah. <laughs> For sure. All right, cool. Um, Brie, on yours, um, shifting from sculpture to painting, obviously you've used different mediums along the way. Um, how do you explore what you want to do in oil painting or watercolors? Like, do you decide what medium you want, depending on what inspires you, depending on the picture you're doing? How, do, how does that work? Um, it depends on what I'm painting. So normally if it's like a plant nature of some sort, mm -hmm. I will use watercolor for different depths because I like layering. Okay. If it's normally a person, I would either use pencil or acrylic paint and more 
if it can turn into 3D, I would most likely use clay. Gotcha. Okay. There was a part where I think you mentioned about uh, expressing yourself without judgment. Uh, you mentioned that uh, to be able to share uh, time creating art helps to communicate something that you feel or that you want to express that can't be expressed in words. Is that is that something that you continue to strive to? How do you see yourself I, doing that? I have a really hard time explaining and reiterating myself in different ways. So I chose to do it through art. Okay. I like to choose an emotion and draw what I think that emotion would look like, hmm. what that person would look like in that emotion or in that moment. Okay. All right. Well, that that's... Um... Let's let me bring up one of your pieces, actually. Bear with me a second. We pop that out, put that there. That's one of your pieces, I believe, right? Yes. Um, so when you drew that, when you, when that came to you, when you inspired to do that, what are you trying to share here? I was trying to show. I chose a pretty complicated emotion because I feel like now people, not a lot of people, can put it into words and this one was grief okay. where it slowly each day you wake up thinking about it and you're slowly getting tired you're getting exhausted of it so she's kind of laying there limp almost mm -hmm. and you always have a friend you reach out to and some event happens so those are birds representing each thing it's not a finished artwork but definitely in the middle of it gotcha okay cool um Come back here now. Um, so it does. I mean, that, and that was the medium used. There was um, was pencil. Yes, sir. Um, Esther, we'll, we'll come back to you for a little bit. The, when you're when you're doing desserts, baking, um, and you're in the kitchen. I'm assuming, right? And you're yes, you're you're, you're, you're uh, doing your stuff. Do you do you ever? I'm assuming you start all, almost off with the recipe, right? Uh, but do you do you ever deviate from that recipe? Do you ever do something a little different, add a little bit more, a little less? What do you do? Well, sometimes uh, I do eyeball things, not too much. I because you know uh, baking is kind of a science, but mm -hmm. I think it's definitely decorating where I get very spontaneous. Like okay. I'll pull out all the sprinkles or the you know different ways. To right, decorate right. a cake up. All right, all right, that's cool. And you were saying you find inspiration from TV shows and and, pin, and uh, Pinterest. Um, I'm assuming that you know, like any artist, when you go to uh, a place that exhibits art or like a bakery, do you do you find things that, where, as you're looking through, do you find inspiration there? Do you even buy the stuff to taste it and say how it came out and what you can do with that? Much to my parents' dismay, yes, they um, are. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. always, you know, they take me to a bakery and I'm like, mom, I got to learn how to make that. You know? <laughs> That's funny. Um, true, sweet tooth could do it, I guess. Um, <laughs> so when, you, when you're finding, um, I, I guess in your art is one thing, I guess, when, when you know the artist maybe, but you also, are there any particular bakers that you're aware of or uh, TV or personalities that you like? There's this guy named Jacques Torres who's on this show called Nailed It. I don't know. I think I always thought he was pretty cool. He was always a very good baker. Very, uh, very, had a very good expertise in his field, which I think is pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, it's good to have a, have someone to look up to. Um, to emulate a little bit. Um, Bree, on, on your everyday life, walking through school, walking home, or where, however, you know, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I don't know, do you do, do other things besides art? Like, are you into sports or? Um, yes. I what, am what, a volleyball player. You're what? Softball? A volleyball player. Oh, volleyball player. Okay, cool. So you're, are you on the team then, or is this intramurals? Um, this is year-round volleyball, so it's club. Okay. Oh, club volleyball. Okay. So when you're out there and doing ath athletic work, 
uh, do you find inspiration in what you're doing there? Do you look at, at, at people and look at them as inspiration for maybe the next drawing or the next um, scene that you like? Definitely. Um, and not just volleyball as well. If I travel anywhere, I will always have like a mini pocket watercolor to draw whatever scenes in front of me okay. to kind of capture the moment because I feel like it represents everything better than a picture because mm -hmm. it's how you saw the moment. It's like how you read what was happening rather right. than it just being, oh, here's a picture of what I saw. Right. It's the way you feel, I guess. Do, yes. do you, do, do you, so I'm imagining you're carrying a book and some watercolors with you. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. So no digital stuff for you? Or do you do do you use an iPad too sometimes or, or one of those um, instruments? Not really an iPad, no. Okay. So you're not into Photoshop or using brushes on any of that? Any of Procreate well, or anything? I ha so I take my own pictures for my artwork. So the one you okay. just showed up is actually a picture of me. Oh, I okay. photographed it and then I had to Photoshop some things with lighting and stuff. Then I drew it. Oh, so wow. Excellent. It's very impressive. It's along the process. <laughs> no, that's good. That's you got to start somewhere and that that's using yourself as a subject is even better. You know what to do with yourself, right? Um, that's cool. Um, so are you, do you have, have, have you put, together all your artwork yet for for wham for this year or are you still working on stuff definitely still working i have my inventory log done and i have all the materials for it but actually doing it is where it's kind of a slow process but definitely more than half are completed all right cool now a little different for esther i bet because it's not like you can work <laughs> on yours in advance because unless you're going to freeze it so what, oh, what's no. the game plan for you what are you going to be doing well, we we were talking about taking discretionary day, the day before the artist market, so I I could just bake. I don't know. So what's wait wait discretionary days? Are those days you're allowed to take off? Yes. Yeah, so you only get is it two brie or it's two. Oh, two. That's two. Uh, you are invested in your art. I can tell. <laughs> you're putting that that those days off into that. That's good. Um, <laughs> So you're going to be working away in the kitchen, I'm assuming, getting getting things ready. Yes, sir. All right, cool. Um, what 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 do you what other interests do you have? I obviously, Bree does volleyball and, and sports. What interests do you have? I um, I played trumpet. I was in the Wesleyan marching band this fall. I participated in basketball. Uh, this winter, okay. and I have in the past participated in the musicals, and I I plan to try out again next year. It's just this year. I want to do the artist market this year. So okay, all right, cool. Um, interesting. The the Wesleyan student always has is multifaceted. That's for sure. <laughs> nice. um, so many different <laughs> things that are going on. I've, I I think I interviewed someone that had she was doing club sport, school sport. And she had other things going on. It's just like, I don't even know how many hours in the day you have to do that. <laughs> um, so when you're finding inspiration, um, is there a special place or music you like to listen to? Either one can go. Well, I I just like to walk around my backyard a lot. I um, yeah. It's pretty, it's a fairly big backyard. I just walk around and kind of think about all sorts of things. But yeah. I definitely draw a lot of inspiration because uh, it's kind of has it's kind of a forest area mm, so okay. there's there's a lot around me and a lot to draw inspiration from so you're not listening to anything you're just listening to nature and just walking around the backyard like that cool. mm. now brie you're laughing but what about you where do you draw your inspiration from music or where, where do you do that so i actually have over 40 playlists of different emotions and things and they all have like a description of a scenario or something i'm an avid reader of fantasy so i'm quite literally always thinking of something new and something that isn't really realistic mm. so 
Okay. No, no, I'm not surprised then. Okay. When you were talking about emotion and drawing that out, that, uh, that almost makes sense. Um, that segues a little bit into one of my other questions. What, so you like to read, it sounds like, uh, fancy novels, YA novels, I'm assuming. Do you have a few favorites that you would recommend? Um, probably the Caraval series and the Lunar Chronicles are most likely my, and Angel Fall. Those are my three okay. favorite series in fantasy right. way. Cool. Um, and playlists, uh, any particular artists on them that you'd like to share? Um, Beyonce. I have like 30. This is, <laughs> I, I mainly listen to R&B. We'll, we'll keep that as flat ground because okay. artists, it's, okay. it's a gotcha. lot to use. That's cool. Okay. Uh, Esther, what about you? Are there any books or types of books or titles that you like that you would share? Um, I, I also do love to read. I, um, I'm kind of basic in some of my favorites. Like I love the Harry Potter and the Percy Jackson series, right. but there's this really good book that I read, um, in this kind of group and it was called Echo. So if any of y'all are looking for book suggestions, I would really recommend it because it's, it's very good, but it's probably one of my favorite books. It's okay. very good. Are there any, well, actually, the Harry Potter, have you heard that, um, was it uh, Warner Brothers is actually going to do a TV series now of the Harry Potter books? Yes. They're redoing the books into a TV they series. They are? Yes, 10 <laughs> episodes per book. It's going to take them forever to get this done. But no yeah, they're coming, they're coming back and J.K. Rowling is apparently all for it. So yeah, I just heard that the other day. Yeah, my kids grew up on it. I used to read it to them when they were younger until they got old enough to read it because that's how long, right? It's, but um, yeah, it's a cool book, books. Um, so what, what about playlists then, Esther? What do you, what do you like listening to? Um, I, listen, I like to listen to classical music a lot, but I really listen to pretty much all genres, really. Okay, that's good eclectic. It's, it's good to be able to listen to different songs and different music. Um, as far as we talked about inspiration a little bit and, and stuff. So, but let's, let's talk a little bit about, let's go back to Esther. Let's, you know, I know that one of your dreams apparently is to have your own bakery. Um, now you're still a young person, so who knows what, you know, may happen and transpire over time, but when you look, when you think of your dream bakery, what would you want in that dream bakery? Um, baked goods, probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I would want it to be, I've always really loved children, like really young children. So I'd want it to be a place where, you know, parents could come w with their young children and just kind of okay. have a good time. Kind of be like a, like a cozy little spot. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. like a family friendly place. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. No, I can say that. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, when you travel have, in a, yeah, I mean, you're in seventh grade, but have you gone anywhere to other cities that you may have stopped at, at a bakery or that may have inspired you in some way like that? I do live by some, some very good bakeries. Like, there's some nearby. Um, I they can get very creative, which is something mm -hmm. that obviously is very necessary for this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you ever think of maybe seeing if you could get part time job working? I'm not necessarily like at a chocolatier or anything like that, but um, yeah, that could be something you could do. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. It's funny because are you familiar with Peter Brook Chocolatier? Yes, in the sir. forum. Okay. Yes, sir. He's he's, he's a, Jeff who own, who's manages the place is a very interesting person. He has summer camps usually, but he also mm -hmm. hires high school kids to work them uh, when when those when they want to work, I guess. And um, they'll do anything in chocolate. It's just totally amazing, and the things they come up with. It's just I don't even know how they do that. Um, Bree, on to you. You're, 
when you're when you're doing when you're doing your artwork i know, i know as for, for i i lay out i do layouts i do magazine layouts i do graphic design work like that i'm not an illustrator or artist by far but i do layouts and stuff and sometimes when i get into something i almost feel like i'm i'm doing clay i start with clay and i'm molding it into a shape and that 72 page magazine is getting molded right on the screen as I'm putting it together without a mock-up almost, which is not the way you should do these things, but this is the way I do it, right? Um, do you find yourself doing things and you're like, that's not the way I should be doing it, but let me let me try it anyway? Let me see how it works. Um, Definitely. This is where the phrase abstract and this mixed media come into play, mm, where you okay. really don't, you'll start out with the plan. You'll never stick with the plan. I rarely ever stick with a plan unless it's a self-portrait. Um, the painting that you actually pulled up was not supposed to have birds. Uh, I was not supposed uh, to be floating. There were not supposed to be ropes. But it felt whenever you feel like it needs something or you want something else into it, obviously you add it. But then it's kind of like a domino effect. Then you'll want something else to go with that. Right. And it kind of just keeps going. Right. So, all right, so let me throw this one up here. Hold on a second. That's another one you did. Um, yes. You want to describe that a little bit to us? Um, I think of this like as you're in a sunroom, you're kind of mm -hmm. calm, laying down flat on your back. Or even if you were like, if it was like a meadow and you were just laying on your back in the grass, tall grass, with little dandelions around you and the sun just reflects so many different shadows in. I like to not always do black and white. I really do like different colors in everything I do. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, most of my pieces, probably you'll find every single color in it, besides mm -hmm. pencil, obviously. Okay. But I definitely felt this one as like a serene moment. It looks very serene. Um... Let's go with, um, there's a couple of uh, pictures I want to bring up of Esther's. Uh, one of them, let's see this one. Let's try this one. Uh, well, actually, let's do that one. Do both of these. So I'm going to bring up three of them, actually. Oh, boy. <laughs> so Esther, tell us a little bit about these. Why? What, what are they? And tell us what... Um, you want to show with that? Well, I think the one with the M&Ms on it, that one was for, uh, we were having a Christmas party for my basketball team. Mm -hmm. And I signed up to bring dessert. And I don't know, I I saw it on um, Pinterest or somewhere. And it kind of just looked like, um, it, it kind of looks like a barrel full of M&Ms. And I just thought that was a really mm -hmm. fun concept. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was the, it was very oh, fun. And those are Kit Kats on, on the outside, I guess. Yes, sir. Cool. But another thing that you don't see inside is that when you cut into the cake, it's um it's red, green, and white and all in like a checkerboard pattern. So that oh, was wow. very fun to make. Right, cool. Yeah, that was complicated. I'm sure it's set up like that, right? What about the uh the chocolate pops, if I'm looking at that correctly? Well, I've, I made a, a fatal mistake when I started baking and I told all my friends that I started baking and say, so they were all like, please bring in cake pops. So it feels like every other weekend I'm making cake pops to bring in for my friends. I think this one was, was probably, I made cake pops for my math class. I think this is probably those cake pops. I don't remember. Though. Okay. And this so, one? That one. Oof, that one, that one's not looking so great, but uh, I really liked the design. Uh, it was actually a cake I saw in a cookbook, so. Oh, okay. And you got a little um, patriotic, I think, on this one. Oh, that one was really fun. That one was for 4th of July, if you can't tell. Um, it, was a, it was a s'mores dip, so there was Hershey's chocolate bars under there, and then you would take graham cracker, crackers and dick, dip that. Yeah dip it in and it was it was pretty good that's cool that's that's what you want you want to uh 
you want to be able to get creative and, and get it going like that. There's definitely a lot of butter in that, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, let's, uh, let me show, let's go to Brie. And we want to, if this behaves, um, that's a sculpture you did, I think, Brie, right? Yes. And um, what, what, tell me a little bit about the sculptures. So these are polar bears. I had, I, so the animals that I did, I was actually experimenting with different glazes. So the dogs that I did were um, uh -huh. almost Oreo. They were light brown, dark brown, cream, and white all swirled into each other. And this one, I wanted to try different textures. And this is actually a different type of clay. That leaves a really hoarse, it's a gritty clay. Excuse me, a different texture. And it has little black dots in it. And it reminded me of a polar bear. And so this was one of the ones that I made with um, smooth skin. Hmm. So okay. that was really fun. Cool. Was this at Wesleyan Artist Market as well at some point or no? Yes. I had this with my elephant swans and dogs. Okay. I had did my elephant, <laughs> which actually took um, around a week and a half because I drew every individual like aged line in oh, the nose, wow. the legs, the body. Uh, wow. So let me ask you something. When something like that sells and goes off with someone, do you like cry a little bit? Is that like my baby's <laughs> left? Um, uh, I like that someone, I like to think more on the positive side, like okay. someone else gets to experience my art. If someone else came into their house or wherever it's being placed, it gives someone else another emotion, mm -hmm. which is kind of like the sense is like spreading whatever I was doing in that moment and I was actually having fun creating different animals. Okay. And I was really happy that someone liked it enough to one, buy it, but also have in their home. <laughs> to show it off. Sure. Right. Sure. That makes sense. Uh, Essa has a different way of, of people enjoying hers than literally <laughs> eat it and it disappears. <laughs> so Very how sad. do you feel about that? Well, one stays a while and one, one is a momentary delight. <laughs> uh, yeah, that must be different. Um, when, so as, as far as, um, have I, have I skipped anything? Do you, is there anything, Brie, that you would like to share that, that we didn't cover or that, um, your experience that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, I just wanted, I started something new this year. Mm -hmm. I do commissions in every medium. So okay. I could also do animals. I'm doing self portraits of any picture. You would just send me a picture via email or phone. I would draw mm -hmm. it or paint it. And that's something new that I'm offering this year at the okay. Western Artist Market. Wow. Okay. Very good. Uh, and Esther, what about you? Anything that I've not touched upon that you'd like to share? Um, not, not really. Okay. That's fine. It's all good. Um, we have been speaking to Esther and Brie from Wesleyan uh, School. Um, you all, have you all, um, you've, you've been through the programs, I'm assuming, like Brie, you've been through some of the art programs and stuff. And Esther, you've been through, um, did, does Wesleyan have bakery, baking, cooking, any classes like that? No, mm -hmm. right? No. It's all academic. Like yeah, academic and sports uh, and science, of course. Um, cool. So when people, if people want to follow you on social media to watch you, to see your work, or would they visit? Is there anything you want to share that way? I don't know if yours a private account or if you have an Instagram that's open to the public. Brie, I have an Instagram. It's called Bubbly Creations by Brie Hill. Okay. And obviously I'll be at the West St. Artist Market. But that, right. Those are ways you could reach me. All right, cool. Esther, anything on your end? Other than being at the Artist Market, 
No. All right, cool. Well, I'm having a great time talking to you too, learning a little bit about your art and your passions. Um, it's always good to go through this. Every year we do this with a set of students um, just before the Wesleyan Artist Market. So it's always fun to see different kids, different grades doing different mediums and how they approach things. So I want to say thank you for being, for sharing with us. Um, thank you for having us. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So hang in there for a minute. I'm just going to sign off, say thank you again to EV Remodeling Inc. for being a sponsor of this program along with other things that we do. You can check them out at evremodelinginc.com. They're based here in Peachtree Corners. Great family. Eli is a great guy. Uh, check them out. They do great work. So feel free. And also check us out at livinginpeachtreecorners.com. And our magazine, the upcoming issue of April, May, will have coverage of three Wesleyan artists, adult artists, that will be at the show. And you can find out more information from us there. And certainly, at, and you can search Wesleyan Artist Market and find out about all the great artists that will be there in April. So thanks again. Appreciate it.